your body is constantly filling you full of acid. Let me explain. Hey everybody, Organized Biology here where we make difficult biology concepts simple. And today we're talking about CO2 and how it affects pH. Now we know that CO2 is a gas, but what is pH? Well, pH is basically standing for parts of hydrogen. So pH stands for parts of hydrogen, specifically hydrogen that is ionized. Now this may not make sense to you, but that just means it's a hydrogen atom and it's dissolved in water. So the more hydrogen ions we have, the more acidic the solution will be. In other words, the lower the pH will be. So from zero to seven, that is considered acidic because it has a lot of hydrogen ions. But it's above seven and up to 14, this is considered basic or alkaline. And that means, obviously, that we have less hydrogen ions. Now to learn more about the pH scale, I recommend you hop over here quick, but we're gonna continue on with how CO2, which has no H in it, right? There's no hydrogen ions in CO2, how it actually affects this process. So I told you that your body is constantly pumping you full of acid. What do I mean by that? Well, your cells, you have 30 trillion of these, and these are the base units, the workhorses of your body. And in order for the cell to survive, it has to go through a process called cellular respiration. And this is how the cell actually produces the energy currency molecule of ATP. And that ATP molecule does a whole slew of things for the cells. You can check out more here. But we also make two other byproducts from this reaction in making ATP, one of which is carbon dioxide, and the other is water. Now, what's interesting is carbon dioxide and water sometimes like to get together. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that these guys are actually going to combine to make something else. So in certain parts of your body, CO2 and water, which look like this in their chemical formulas, will get stapled together by a common molecule in your body called an enzyme. And an enzyme is basically acting as staplers or scissors for a chemical reaction. And in this case, we're going to staple these two molecules together with an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. And carbonic anhydrase will form a molecule called H2CO3, otherwise known as carbonic acid, which looks something like this in its molecular formula. So notice in this molecule, we have H2O and CO2. So basically, we just took these molecules and stapled them together, forming a new molecule. Now, when you look at the word carbonic acid, right, acids obviously mean that there's going to be some hydrogen ions in the solution, right? Because that's what we said about acids. They add hydrogen ions to the solution. So in this reaction, once we form this molecule of carbonic acid, this carbonic acid actually splits apart ever so slightly right about here. So if we split that hydrogen off, we form a hydrogen ion. But then we also have the other molecule that is going to be bicarbonate. And this molecule has a negative one charge to account for the positive one charge that we have for hydrogen. So what do we see happening here? We see that carbon dioxide, when we're producing it in our cells, is forcing this reaction to form eventually hydrogen ions. So when we have a lot of CO2, it actually lowers the pH because it's adding those hydrogen ions into solution. So that's what happens when carbon dioxide is high. Let's recreate this reaction over here. So now we see that high carbon dioxide leads to more acids because we have more hydrogen ions. But here's the thing. One thing I didn't tell you about this reaction is that it is actually reversible. So that means sometimes we can actually take these two products and we can flip them and go the other direction. And in this case, your carbonic anhydrase would act as almost scissors because it'll take this molecule of carbonic acid and actually clip it apart and form CO2 and water again. So when does the reaction reverse the other direction? Well, check this out. It's when you have low CO2. Let me show you what I mean by this. So notice over here, when I had high CO2, I put it on the top of here, right? And the reaction flowed downstream, downhill, to form these products. But now, CO2 will actually be low. So I'm going to put it on the bottom of this whiteboard and show what happens when we have low CO2. So in this case, we're actually taking the hydrogen ion, the bicarbonate, which is in relatively higher concentrations compared to the low CO2, and we're going to force the reaction the other direction downstream, thus forming CO2 and water. Now think about this. If we are now taking away the hydrogen ion and forming these two molecules, what does that do to our pH? Well, if we're losing hydrogen ions, this actually raises pH, otherwise known as becoming more basic. So I like to think of this reaction as a sort of a teeter-totter. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here, when we have high CO2, it's forcing the reaction downstream, where we see here. So the teeter-totter is basically like this, where we have a lot of CO2 up here, and it's going to flow downwards in that direction. Ow. 
But now we're going to flip the teeter-totter. So now you see CO2 being pretty low, and that forces a reaction this direction, thus taking away these hydrogen ions and making your body more basic. So put them together and you see this. So depending on the levels of carbon dioxide, it'll force the reactions in two different directions. So now check out these videos to see how this process works in specific areas of your body, like your digestive system and your bloodstream.